I just, I just saw the most amazing conversation. Hi, everyone. I just saw the most amazing conversation ever between Stephen Furtick and John Gray. It's a, it was about racism, but it went so much deeper than that on so many levels. I would um, urge either of you, I'll put a li link on my page. Um, they'll be replaying the conversation over, over again at 11.30, 2.30, 5 o'clock, and 8 o'clock. I would encourage everyone to watch it. It's powerful. And as I was sitting there, oh God, as I was sitting there, because they were talking about the gentleman who was killed on the street by a police officer, the black gentleman who was killed by a white police officer on the street, um, somewhere in the States, in Minneapolis. And... It happened sometime this week, and they were they were talking about it, and the whole conversation is amazing. And um, but one thing one thing that is going through my head is we need we as a society need to love people in a very real way. And I'm not talking about loving people as in, oh, I love you, and let's do this, and let's hug, and everything's all right. No, I'm talking about loving people hard, loving people for real, despite whether the fact that they're black, whether they're white, whether they're straight, whether they're gay, whether they're whatever, whether they're Christian, whether they're Muslim, it needs to start with love. And you guys, oh, um, you guys know I'm a music person, like, so, um, I was... At the end of the interview, the strangest song began to pop in my head. Um, the song uh, Bleeding Love by Leona Lewis. And I was like, Bleeding Love? You mean, you mean that song? Keep bleeding, you keep, keep bleeding love. I keep bleeding, I keep, keep bleeding love. I keep bleeding, I keep, keep bleeding love. We need to just ask God, all of us, to give us a heart of love. And I also was thinking, um, I was thinking also too when they were having uh, this conversation about white and black and saying where they come from and saying uh, their opinions or whatever. Um, powerful conversation. Watch it today. It'll be up tomorrow. Um, I was also thinking about all the people out there with disabilities who have nobody to speak for them. And God has uniquely gifted me um, as a woman, as a black person, as a Christian, and as a woman with a disability to speak to for people with disabilities. And quite, quite honestly, I've shied away from it because I didn't want to be pigeonholed. But, but seeing John Gray saying, I'm a voice for the voiceless, it, I, it just dawned on me that it, this whole uh, thing about speaking for people with disabilities, it's not about me, it's not whether I feel comfortable or whatever. It's, it's the platform that God has given me and I'm so, first of all, let me say, 
I'm sorry for ignoring that calling on my life because I was too afraid that I'd be pigeonholed and I don't like I'm so sorry that that was my fault and I'll and I'll do better because God has given me a unique responsibility to speak for that community because right now there is nobody speaking for uh like there are people who don't have disabilities social workers and stuff speaking for people with disabilities but there's nobody hardly anybody speaking for people with disabilities hardly anybody speaking about how hard it is and I'm not saying oh woe well, is me but it is hard even for for what we have in Canada, it is hard to um, have a disability and, and like live in this society. And it's hard for people to take you seriously. And um, I've talked to many of my friends during this pandemic and they are struggling one of my best friends I talked to and she was so depressed she was like oh my god this is just so hard um because getting supplies is hard and uh and not being able to get groceries is hard and all this stuff is hard and I've just endeavored that whatever the Lord has called me to say on whatever issue without fear, I will do that, do that without fear. And it's, it's difficult for me because I, I think we need to redefine what love is. Love for me is, um, uh, in, in spite of whatever love doesn't mean agreement love doesn't mean that we have to all think the same way feel the same way whatever love means I embrace you in spite of the fact that um, you believe differently than me or you vote differently than me or you whatever I embrace you the the fact despite the fact that you are different than me the despite the fact that you are black despite the fact that you are white despite the fact that you are gay despite the fact that you are um any part of the any community love means i embrace you i accept you and sometimes accepting doesn't mean all the time you agree. Accepting a person doesn't mean that you agree with them. Accepting them means despite the fact that I may not agree with you, I embrace who you are as humans. And we need to start getting back to people as humans and and not as the color of skin not by our sexual orientation not by our um whatever um whatever label you want to put on us and we just need to love people and love people strong in a strong way not a wishy-washy way um to love people in a strong way and you don't have to agree with with everything people do to love them jesus didn't agree with everything that people do but he still loved people the woman at the well he said um he said uh you have five husbands and whatever he, he was just saying the facts. He didn't judge her. He just said the facts. And he said, I know you need water to drink. 
And then he gave her water. He said, but you need a, a, a new form of water that you've never had before. So many people are thirsty. So many people need love. And when I say love, I mean in a strong way. Love doesn't mean agreement with everything. Love means despite the fact that we don't agree, I can embrace you. I can love you. I can accept you. And we all need the cross. In, in several ways. We all need the cross. We all have things that God would be, would be, um, would be not proud of of us, but he still loves us. He still accepts us and says, you know what? I love you anyway, and I will change you in time. Sometimes, Love doesn't mean, oh, come as you are doesn't mean, um, you just come, I, ex I accept anything. But he, but he, um, when he embraces you into the kingdom, he loves on you so much that any sin in you has got to change. You cannot meet Jesus and stay the same person. And those people who have met Jesus cannot stay the same person. They have a form of God, godliness, but, but deny the power thereof. The power of Jesus is to change lives. It's not just for heaven. It's not just for, you know, a, a good Christian side. It's a life change and I think we just need to understand that people need love and you can you can see color but not base the person on their color okay so you can see I'm a black person but you don't have to base the fact that I'm black so I need to to like this kind of music or I need to worship this kind of way or I need to do this. I'll, I'll tell you something. When I was younger, I used to hide the fact that I love rock music because I was a black girl. I love all kinds of music, but I used to hide the fact that I liked um, rock music because I was afraid people would judge me for liking rock music. But I came to the point to say, I am who I am. Like me or not like me. You know, I, like, I, I'm at the point now where I'm totally embracing all aspects of me. And if God wants to change me, he can do so. He's, he's, he's totally, he can totally do so. And, and it's just like embracing all aspects of me. The world just needs total love. We need a love over. We, we need like just to understand, not just the love is patient, love is kind, but love is strong wrong. Love is the strongest thing ever. Love can heal all wounds. Love can he love can take away any destruction. Love can heal pain. Love can heal hurt. First of all, the love of God, the real love of God. And then second of all, the love of humans. See, I don't think the reason why this is going on in our world, like people getting gunned down in the streets for being black by, by white people, I don't think we fully understood love and what Christ created us to do. 
he created us first of all to worship him and number two he created us to be in community with each other despite all our disagreements despite everything and we all need the same cross and what i say often is um i get asked by homosexual people all the time i get asked um does does god love me is homosexuality a sin and i say it it certainly is but um god has the same grace for you is the same grace for me god looks at my sin um of an overactive libido the same way he looks at your sin as homosexual of homosexuality and god loves everyone god loves everyone so there's a verse in the Bible to knock everyone to the wall. So if a Christian comes and says, oh, in in Romans, it says it's an abomination to be a homosexual. Well, well, you can say if they're using F-bombs in the lunchroom, you can say that it is also an abomination. It is also um, filthy language shall not be named among you. So that is also a scripture in the Bible. We all need the cross and no sin is greater than another sin. And if we continue to feel that way, we'll ostracize people that God came to love. God came to save. Like he came to save everyone. He came to save everyone. And he loves everyone. And his love is not the wishy-washy kind of love. His love is strong and life-transforming. And if people really knew the love of Jesus, oh my gosh, it would change the world. And I'm... And the love of Jesus is so much different than what we think. The love of Jesus is not judgment. The love of Jesus is not, oh, your sin is better than my sin, or your color is better than my color. The love of Jesus is life transforming. The love, the love of Jesus is uniting. The love of Jesus breaks barriers and and just does everything. So it all comes down to love and that strong kind of love. That not that wishy-washy kind of love that says, oh, you are awesome. Oh, oh, you are great. And, and when you need people that are not there, that's not love, that's lip service. We need to experience the ride or die kind of love that says, I am with you in the storm. I will jump in front of a, bu a bullet for you. I will do all of that. And until we can see each other like that and celebrate our uniquenesses, this racism crap won't stop. But when we see each other as people when we can celebrate our humanity first and our disability uh, second or our sexual orientation second or our color second that's when real humanity that's when real life will begin when we can strip the world down to humanity it's not it's not the, it's not what um, Tiger Woods said one time. He said, Oprah asked him, he said, what race are you? What do you consider yourself? He said, I'm part of the human race. 
And we've got to understand that being part of the human race means a global coming together of community, of a celebration of different ethnic groups. And, you know, if we were to really come together, all our ethnic things, um, and we could borrow from this, and we could do um, that, and we could do that, if we were, were to really come together, we could make magic and turn the world upside down. When I was, this is so funny, because when I was about 15, I wrote a song called The Human Race. And the court, um, and, um, it, it said, um, Looking down, hear the sound, people talking all around. Mother child, children cry, nowhere to run. Here and there, everywhere, terror, horror fills the air. Da -da 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 we must stop this madness, we must unite. We must all come together, we must fight. Let all nation. Let all nations, all colors, and all creeds, let us lift up our hands and just believe that we're the human race. We've got to get together, we all must face and get through the stormy weather. If we believe that we can overcome, that's when finally we will be as one. We're the human race. We've got to get together. We all must face and get through the stormy weather. If we believe that we can overcome, that's when finally we will be as one. And that's amazing. And that came from a 14-year-old that wrote that I wrote that song when I was 14 years old and I was thinking about that this week even before this conversation and this conversation between uh, John Gray and Stephen Furtick really just captured my heart and really just made me cry that we we need an outpouring of love Lord God give us this outpouring of love Teach us how to love the way you love. Teach us how to see people like you see people. Teach us how to um, uh, minister to people the way you do. Teach us how to love on people with disabilities. Teach us how to love on people of, of different views and different things and uh, different, um, different experiences. And, and teach us how to be like you. And a lot of people would say uh, when I said all the things about the LGBT community, aren't we supposed to like tell them that they're wrong and that, you know, God can save them? Uh, no, 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 we're not. What we're supposed to do is show them Christ and let him do what he's going to do in their lives just the way that he does with us and this whole we need to get you saved so let's just be um hateful towards you it doesn't work and the lord doesn't want us to do that what the lord wants us to do is point all people to him and, and he will do the changing if there needs to be changing. And I'm not saying we cannot stand up for what's right and righteousness or that we have to be silent. But we need not be judgmental. We don't know where people have come from. We don't know what people are walking through, what people are going through. How dare we think we're better because we're quote-unquote Christians. We're no better than they are. 
the only thing that's be that's different about us is we they turn to drinking when things are going wrong. They turn to sex when things are going wrong. We have a savior that covers us, that keeps us, that is a friend, so we don't need to turn to anything like that. That's the only difference. The only difference is our sin. We know our sins are covered under the blood. And the re, um, I say the only difference between um, a Christian and non-Christian is because is that 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 a non-Christian doesn't know that they need a savior, and a Christian knows and receives the blessing of of a savior. And if you're listening to me at this moment, and um, uh, and you want to know what I'm talking about and this whole Jesus thing, um, let me pray for you, Father. Um, I I know people are are watching to me today, me, me today, all kinds of people. Uh, black people, white people, and everything in between. God, I pray that you will just um, saturate them with your love and your grace. And I pray that you will create in them a hunger to know you. And I pray that you will just receive them with your everlasting love, like, like it says in your word. In the name of Jesus, amen. And a lot of preachers do what what's called the sinner's prayer, which means they have you pray, pray after them. I don't do that because I believe that God wants to hear your words uh, with you. So, what if you feel a tugging in your spirit to receive Jesus as Lord? Just cry out to Him. The Bible says if you. If you confess with your with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. And so, just do that right now. And if after you do that, you need help in second steps, feel free to message me and say, "I I prayed with you, Rachel. I have, um, what do I do now?" And I will gladly talk to you about uh, next steps. Um, so, if you feel that thing in your spirit that says, I want that Jesus that she's talking about. I want that love in my heart that she's talking about. Um, so, just cry out to him and say, God, I need you. And just just say, God, I believe that you are who you are. And just say it in your own way. He wants to hear your voice. He wants to hear your words um, in this moment. Whatever. And there's no incorrect way to pray. There's no correct way to pray. Just talk to the Lord like you would talk to me. In your own words, in your own way. And as I said, if you need help with that, just feel free to message me. Thanks. Bye. I love you so much. Take care. We're a human race. We gotta get together. We all must face. And and I think racism, sexism, disabledism, all, all that is not a, uh, is not a political condition. It doesn't have to do with the political climate. It's a heart condition and it's a human condition. And we all need to be concerned about these issues. We all need to be concerned when 
people with disabilities don't get what they need in what part of the world they live in. We all need to be concerned when a person is shot because of the color of their skin. We all, we all need to be concerned about this because if we're not concerned, if we're not all concerned, it won't change. Um, I was watching uh, T.D. Jakes uh, the other day and um, he was talking about um, his uh, community thing and, and um, as I sat there and I'm saying to myself, that's wonderful, Bishop, um, but um, it, it needs to go beyond I'm black, so I'm here to help uh, black people. We all need to be concerned when a black person can't uh, get a job. We all need to be concerned when people with disabilities can't get what they need. We all need to be concerned. If we are, as a human society, not all concerned, if we don't all cry when things go down, or we don't uh, cry because it doesn't affect us, we are missing the point. We need to be connected first on a human level, like I said before. We need to all, we need to mourn with those who mourn. We need to weep with those who weep. We need to have joy with those who have joy. Whatever color you are, whatever, whether you're a man or a woman, we, we all need to feel each other's pain. And until we all stand up, and say, this is wrong, this got, has got to stop, it's not going to change. Sorry, I said I was signing off. Now I really am signing off. Thank you so much, guys. See you later for Storytime Sunday. And, and follow, my, follow my link that I'll put on the page above this. Uh, for the uh, Elevation Services this afternoon. This issue, this interview is a must for anyone to see. I'll put a link on my page. I'll see you later. Bye.